Good morning, everybody. Please sit down. Very warm welcome to you this morning. And a very extra special welcome if this is your first time with us today. And we hope that this will be an important step on your journey of faith for you today. Uh, service of Holy Communion this morning for All Saints Day. And just a reminder that this afternoon at four o'clock it is the service of reflection and remembrance up at St. Thomas's. Hello to everybody at home. I haven't given them a wave yet. Hi. Hi to everybody at home. Thank you for joining us. <coughs> and to everybody who might be joining us on Catch Up as well. And let's just have a moment of quiet before we begin our worship this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please stand if you're able and that's comfortable for you. Um, and we're going to sing for all the saints, omitting verses 3, 4 and 5. And it's mission praise number 148 if you want a hymn book. Preparation as we prepare to make our confession to God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. <coughs> Almighty God, our <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. 
through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> may Almighty God have mercy on you forgive you your sins and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand if that's comfortable for you and we'll say the Gloria together. <coughs> Glory to, to God, God in the, in the highest, highest and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Lord Heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the special prayer for today, All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us peace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, <coughs> now and forever. Amen. Please sit down for our first reading. first reading is taken from Revelations, chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing round the throne, and round the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory, and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? Where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is from 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 <coughs> to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. 
but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Please stand if you're able for our second hymn, All Heaven Declares, and that's Mission Page 14. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up in the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak, taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and after all kinds of evil against you falsely in my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. What am I going to say? Yes, you've got it. <laughs> Once upon a time, I'm sorry, I've done a few of these recently. I'm getting a bit of a sort of stuck in the rut, but it's just the way it flows through sometimes. Once upon a time, if you're not a regular, that's code for telling you a story that is not true. <laughs> Everything else I tell you is true, but when I say once upon a time, it's not true. Once upon a time, New York City, there was a big Roman Catholic church. And the priest in charge there was having a real problem. The roof had rotted it. And it was going to cost about a million dollars to repair it. And it was in the rundown part of town. There were hardly any people coming on a Sunday. And this Roman Catholic priest, he was really struggling. How am I going to pay for this place? It's a disaster. No one's going to help me. Really difficult. Now, it just happened at that time. There was a mafia family in the area, led by two brothers. And one of them, as the Americans would say, got whacked. He got shot and killed. So the other brother, who was in mourning, came to the, came to the priest. Imagine Robert De Niro, but I'm not going to do the accent. <laughs> it would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? I couldn't do that. And he says, Father, I hear you've got a million dollar problem, okay? Well, I've got a proposition for you. I want you to do the Requiem Mass for my dear brother. 
and I want you to do that, and I will give you a million dollars as long as you say that he was a saint. Oh, well, <laughs> Christmas, what a tragic answer, etc. Of course, yes, I, yes, I, yes, I will do that. So everything's prepared, and the night before, the priest goes to bed. And in bed, he's tossing and turning and tossing and turning, thinking to himself, how can I say that before God? I just can't do it. So on the day of the Requiem Mass, the coffin comes in, the family moves into the front, the brother's sitting just down there. <coughs> and the priest comes to the point where he does the eulogy, and he gets up, takes a deep breath, and says, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you the truth about our dear friend here. I want you to know that he was a murderer, a hoodlum, a racketeer, a pimp, he was a thief, he ran prostitution, he ran drug rackets, he was a murderer, he killed people, he cheated at cards, he was a low down, no good hood. And he sees the brother sitting there, and the brother's going red, and he's putting his hand up towards the inside of his jacket. And suddenly the priest gets a moment of inspiration and he said, but, compared to his brother, he was a saint! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, if I told you that wrong before, <laughs> I, don't it's it's good. Good. I think it's a great one. I don't tell jokes for the point of it because today is all saints. So it's about to say it does fit in. But no, I don't do jokes just for the sake of it. But actually, what is a saint? Now, I'm on delicate ground here because I have to recognise there were different traditions in the, in, in, in the church and there has been a long tradition which I fully really accept and understand and I know it's very meaningful for many people to celebrate the saints. That's why in many churches you have stained glass windows um, which show the saints and there is certainly in the Catholic and Orthodox traditions a, a, a big a, a understanding of saints being venerated as people who can point us towards God. <coughs> I'm not going to try and go over, all over the Reformation but again. But there is another part of the story, and that is that most of us think of saints as somebody wonderful up there. But the scriptures talk about it well but differently. And this is quite radical, and I want to put this down before you today. Because in the scriptures, it's not a question of you become a very holy person, and then you might become a saint. The scriptures point another picture, that is God's love is so overwhelming, God's love is so full of grace and light and truth, that when it touches our lives and we respond to him, we become saints. Now I don't mean that we end up with a halo over our head, because you at the moment can see that I'm not wearing mine. I don't think you've ever seen, I'll be honest with you, you could say that, you know, well, let's put it this way. The scripture says this, when Paul writes to his um, to the churches around the Mediterranean world, he practically always begins his epistles saying, to the saints in Corinth, to the saints in Thessalonica, to the saints in Rome, or wherever it may be. Now he's not saying, I'm writing this letter now to the really important, very holy members of your church. He's actually writing it <coughs> to you and to me. Because in Paul's theology, we become saints when we are touched by God and we respond and say yes to Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean that we get the halo of that, but we are then saints. Now I have to tell you, standing here this morning, it's hard to believe when I look out at you lot. <laughs> and you're looking at me, you're thinking exactly the same thing, okay. It's not that we try to be good or try to be Christian. And somehow, we might end up being a saint. The liberating truth is that God's grace is given to us, and therefore we are saints. And we are set free to then live the lives of saintliness, or of Christian discipleship, or just simply being a Christian. So it's that quite radical thing about being liberated by grace. Oh, that's not the end of the story, of course. And that's where sometimes you could say the Reformation got it wrong. It's about beginning a journey then of living up what you have been made. Now that's the way St. Paul says it, he calls to churches and calls them saints. But we had it also in our second reading of 1 John. And it says there, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, which is, you might say, another way of saying saints. 
He doesn't say to the, to, to the Christians there, he doesn't say to them, try harder to be good. Go to church more often. Go to services more often. Sing more loudly the hymns. Listen to the boring sermons from the vicar. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, if you work hard, you might end up being a child of God. He says, you are a child of God. The love the Father has given us, but we should be called children of God. It's exactly the same thing. He looks at us and we are his children. Now we mess up. We fail. We don't have our halos around our head. It's a journey. And it's a long journey. And sometimes it's a tough journey. And it's a journey sometimes where we just simply fall down and we mess up. <coughs> but we're still children of God. We are still saints. And that's why in the scriptures we are called be what you are. Live out what God has... If you like to be looking that way, it's what your baptism is, what we're doing in our, in our sort of um, in pilgrimage course at the moment. Live out your baptism. God's grace has been poured out. So we then set free to live a different life. Now, of course, again, we'll mess up. It's not going to be easy, and there'll be times when we feel we fall flat on our faces. And actually, in a sense, that's okay. We all do that at various points. It's how we get back up again, how we get back on track. So this all say it's Sunday, and I just encourage you to know not that one day we're going to put your picture up in that window, because we're not. We're not that sort of saints. But you are all saints. We are all children of God. And that liberating message to set us free. I don't know about you at the moment, I feel just picking up next week and remember something a bit, but I think the, the world's in a dark place at the moment. At all sorts of levels, we're so polarised. There's so much anger out there at the moment. Sometimes righteous anger, I might understand that. But it's as if almost people are, 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 are getting each other, they're sitting in silos, lobbing verbal hand grenades at each other, and there's very little listening going on. And life is, I think we're in a dark place in my world, in our country. And therefore I think part of being a saint at this time is about trying to be people of peace. And I think there's a lot more, and I will be saying a bit more about that next week if you know that. But in this world, and there's a lot of darkness at the moment, we are set free by love and grace. So we can sing all the saints, and that's we can sing it to each other. And when you've actually been blessed by God, when the Spirit touches you, when you receive communion, when the Word becomes alive for you, go out there at the end of this service and live that same Jesus, not by holding a hand together like this, but by living like Jesus in the world He loves. And he loves us and calls us to serve. Thank you, Simon. Please stand if that's comfortable and we will say the creed together. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit down as we continue in prayer. Watching for a new heaven, waiting for a new earth, we pray to the Lord. And the response today, at the end of each prayer, I'm going to say, Lord of the saints, please can you respond, strengthen our faith. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Everlasting God, we pray that your church, built on the foundation of the saints, will be faithful to the teaching of Christ, so that it reflects his likeness. Lord and Father, as you kindle the flame of your love in the hearts of the saints, give to us the same faith and power of love, that we may benefit from their unselfish examples. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Creator God, we pray for those who represent us in government, both here in the United Kingdom and throughout the world. May they be men and women of integrity, guided by a desire for public service and a love of the truth. We ask that they may also be just and compassionate, so that all peoples may be led in the ways of righteousness and mercy. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. <coughs> Powerful God, may your kingdom of love and peace be established in this world and grow. Replace the rule of wealth and war with your realm of justice and peace. We pray for all places where there is conflict, and especially for the Middle East and the Ukraine. Grant wisdom to world leaders that solutions may be found, and all, may, all people may live without fear. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Loving God, we call to mind our families and friends, neighbours and colleagues, thanking you for all the loving care and forgiveness, and asking your light to shine in all areas of hurt and misunderstanding. Make your home among us, dwell with us in this place, and let it be a place of heavenly peace, a place of refuge for all. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Healing God, hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. We bring to you all those whose lives are darkened by pain, fear or weariness. Come to our aid, help us to bear what must be carried. And in a moment of silence we lift to you those who are known to us who are in need of your healing touch. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Eternal God, we thank you for all the saints, those recognised by the church and those known only to a few and to you. We praise you for their example and rejoice that they live in your heaven with every tear wiped away. In your mercy, may all who have died in your love know your lasting peace. We pray especially today for Jeff Thompson, a close friend of the Inslee family who died last week, and for his family and friends. And also for Dick Murphy, who died sadly yesterday. He might be known to you as the father-in-law of Ros Bailey. May we pray for his soul and for all his family and friends, and for all who are mourning their loved ones. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. As you have sustained your saints through centuries of service, keep us faithful here and now, until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are able, would you please stand? Oh. <coughs> 
We are fellow citizens of the saints in the household of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let's share that peace with each other and with those who are on the video cameras at home as well. He's going to keep my jeans to his house. Okay. Peace with the gale. Peace with the gale. Peace with the gale. All right, okay. <laughs> Please be with you, Charlie. Please be with you, Liz. Please be with you, Jenny. Please be with you, Mark. Please be with you. Sorry. Please be with you, Patricia. I've got the wrong side now. Please be with you. Please be with you, Sarah. Please be with you, Sarah. Please be with you, Sarah. Sorry. Peace with you, Carol. Peace with you, Sue. Peace with you, David. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you, Carol. Peace with you, Louise. Well, I hope you managed to find a safe spot doing that. There are one or two of them hanging around here today. You come down towards communion. It's number three in the hymn book on the screen. Hallelujah. Sing to Jesus. Here's the scepter. Here's the throne. <coughs>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, surrounded by a crowd of witnesses and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The right work army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, I claim you in communion with angels and archangels, and with all those who serve you on earth and worship you and now in heaven. We raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the reign of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same act that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many <coughs> and forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We sit on kneel now for the Lord's prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, the risen high priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in a moment till he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts. By faith, we thank you.
God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who are shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with you and all the saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now I shall hand over to the church warden. I hope some of you noticed the reverse advent calendar. I think they were here last week. If you don't want to bring something in from every day, just bring in whatever you'd like to donate and we'll put a box together here in church. 
Um, do take one of those if you'd like to. They're on the table through there. It is the service of reflection and remembering this afternoon at 4 p.m. at St. Thomas's. We take it in turns and it's their turn this year. Um, the library Christmas card shop is now open. We'd be very pleased if you'd like to come and have a look around. The, ch <coughs> the Children's Society and Hearing Dogs for Deaf People, my favourite charities, will be there. And I think we're on duty on Thursday this week and then a couple of other times. Um, the PCC is on Thursday evening, the 9th. Um, our study church group meeting will be here this Tuesday at 10.30. If you haven't been to any before, you're very welcome to come to one. They're not a lead, they don't follow on from the next one. Um, I do need donations, please, for the Jam Jar game at the first Friday evening in December, which will be from 6 to 8, the church fair. I think that's it. Thank you very much. So we come to sing our final hymn, our number four. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, in love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.